In Tennessee, rookie programmer Brian Whited has taught himself the code to make his robot move. It's like learning a new language, you know, you learn a little bit, you figure it more out as you go, but we don't know much of it, but we know enough for now. You could have forward and backward, so it'd be up and down right. on the first arm, and if you pulled the trigger, then it's the second, the second arm. arm. This is the very first year Brian's team is building, wiring, and programming. When you go backwards, of course it goes backwards. Can you show me the what right the code thing. looked like? Yeah, sure. Did you map it out first? Yes. Brian is a senior at Seymour High School. Here, more than 70% of the students will go on to higher education. What age did you know you were going off to college? I was maybe seven or eight. Years old? Yeah. You knew you were going to college? Yeah because your mom was like, you're going to college. Yeah. His mom, Juanita, didn't attend college. She's making sure her three children don't make the same mistake. Brian is the youngest. This last year has been very difficult for the family. Brian's father, Jeff, fought leukemia for years. He was only 48 when he died last spring. Well, I've started to realize which things are important and which things aren't. After your husband died. Right. Yeah. Didn't matter how much money we had. I would rather him have done more that he wanted to do. What's your vision of the best for Brian? I would want him to do something that he loves and something that he's passionate about. Um, I would also like him to be comfortable. Comfortable means a high-paying, high-tech job. Brian took the ACT college entrance exam just two days after his father's funeral. And he aced it scoring in the top 1% of the entire nation. Suddenly, Brian had a world of opportunity open to him. Brown, MIT, Swarthmore. And the strange thing was that when he took his ACT, he did not put any of these schools down at all. So they, so just... they must have a way of tracking people. Yale also sent an application, and it became his top choice. What do you think his chances are for getting in? I don't know. Do you think his education is as good as anybody else in the country? No, no, definitely not. I mean, I, that's a I, nice school. That's a good school. Right, right. Full of middle class people. Right. With great middle class values. Yeah. And you don't think he's getting a great education? It might be my misperception, but I always keep thinking that it's better everywhere else. Maybe not a misperception after this revelation from Tennessee's former governor, Phil Bredesen. Were you lying to parents about? Oh, yeah, abso absolutely. I mean, oh, now lying to parents about thing, how well their kids were doing. In one case, eighth grade math, uh, we were telling 83 or 84 percent of the kids that they were proficient uh, when they took the national well, test. What was the real number? 22. 22 percent. And instead of 84. Instead of 84, and he just said, "Look, you, you know, you may feel good for a minute, but it's a if lie. you think that." but um, you're not doing these kids any favor by lying to them like that. High scores on easy state tests made Tennessee seem like an educational powerhouse. The truth, Tennessee was one of the lowest performing states in the country. Today begins a new era, a new time in public education in our country. In 2001, the passage of No Child Left Behind tied student test scores to federal education dollars. President Bush's No Child Left Behind law, the states have to report their standardized test scores, but they're making their own tests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to need to report your numbers, but guess what? You get to design your own tests. I mean, that was it's, what No Child it's, Left Behind It's did. going to be you report your numbers, and by the way, some really bad things happen if your numbers aren't good, but you can figure out how you figure out the numbers. <laughs> And um, I think that pushed an awful lot of states in the direction of, well, we don't want these bad things to happen. We don't want to lose federal funding. We don't want to be held up as bad school systems. So they let's dumb down make the it test. work. Let's make it work. And make it work means they dumb down the test. The test. Governor Bredesen said very bluntly, we lied. We lied to parents in the state of Tennessee. How many other states are lying? In many, many states around the country, we have been lying to children, lying to families. What's many, many? More than half? Um, Yes, po yes, p probably more than half. Absolutely. More than two thirds. Um, well, you you know you can go look. You, 
You can do the math and look at those disparities. We did look. Out of 30 states that have reported test scores for 2010, 29 claim their eighth graders are doing better in math than national tests indicate. First, you need to size the chain up. We need to set it up. In Tennessee, easy tests came with low standards. But reforms put in place by Governor Bredesen are now raising the bar for all students. The whole process of just getting more kids interested, I think... The focus of Tennessee's reforms, the math and science curriculum. The idea? Pay those teachers more, create specialized science schools in poor neighborhoods, and put into place some of the toughest graduation requirements in the country. Governor Bredesen also joined more than 40 other states in developing a set of high national standards in reading and math. This is just to give a visual This is just idea. give a visual, yeah. But Tennessee's reforms come too late for high school seniors like Brian. Your son value at zero. At Brian's school, only about 20 students a year out of 1,300 take calculus or physics, the top math and science classes offered. Started out with, I believe, eight or nine, and several dropped. Seymour's calculus teacher can't keep students in her classroom. And then they realize, well, I'm going to have to work. And I think some of them are burning out their senior year. And they think, whoa, I'm going to have to work. I don't know if I want to put in this much time. What about the parents? I mean, do the parents call you up and say, put Jimmy in physics. I want him to be the most prepared. <laughs> no, no, never. No. What parents do call the principal about sports. We live in America. Our sports are important to us. Does that drive you crazy? Well, no, it's what it is, what it is, I guess. That's a value system. Yes. How do you change a value system? People, it has to be important to them. You know, you've got average, and there's nothing wrong with average. Average middle class, we're very happy. This is wonderful, we're moving along here. But no one's knocking down the door saying, make this school great. Right. I'm wanting to provide the best education I can for the students, that's my job. Everybody should be pushing toward the top. But getting them to do it, you know, jumping on board and say, hey, let's go, is not as easy. How far is the claw in front of the robot place? We want to turn revolutions into engines. A big challenge for this team. Like, so if you have to, what would you be thinking of? Getting the arm built on time. So we've got that arm set. It's about as high as it's going to be able to go angle-wise. It's about like that. This week is going to be programming the arm, building the arm, putting the arm on, seeing what we're going to do with the mini box because we're still not entirely sure on that. Will their inexperience keep them from winning? How about 20? What role do parents play when it comes to getting kids to tackle math and science? I can be 